Hey everybody, welcome to Maker Camp. My name is Kevin Walseth with DigiKey Electronics, and we are here to learn about breadboarding. So I apologize for last week, we had a little technical difficulties, but here we are and we're ready to hit the ground running. And I'm gonna teach you a little bit about learning how to breadboard. So a few things to start with. Welcome to Maker Camp. Maker Camp is a way of bringing projects for you to do at home and supporting parents and guiding kids to learn hands-on activities and features some awesome makers that are gonna teach you new skills. And if you want more, go to makercap.com slash events. And we're gonna have a lot of fun. There's a ton of really good people out there that are coming on to Maker Camp. So go to the page, sign up, see what's coming up next, and let's have some fun. So first thing I'm gonna show you is our Learn to Breadboard activity page. So here, let me show that to you. Here it is on the right, right there. So what a breadboard is. Actually, before I get to what a breadboard is, who am I and who is DigiKey? I think we should start there. So like I said, my name is Kevin Walseth and I am from DigiKey Electronics. We are located in Northern Minnesota and we are a huge electronics distributor. We have everything from individual resistors, capacitors, 555 timers, anything you need for an electronic circuit board design, or we have circuit boards and tools and things that can guide you and aid you in your design. Raspberry Pi, Arduino, Adafruit boards, the, the Feather platform, SparkFun, we have it all. So if you're a maker, come to DigiKey, check it out. Go to maker.io and check out some of the cool projects we have listed there. Some of the blogs that kind of People talk about some of the cool things that they've done and how to make it happen. So with that said, let's get into our learning breadboard activity. So this is a breadboard. This is called a half size breadboard. And what it does is it has areas on it that are electrically connected. I removed the coating on the back to give you a better eyes view on this. So these five components are electrically connected. These five row or uh, columns, but it's not connected to the one next to it. So you can see this is connected here, but it's not connected to this row. So it allows you to connect the same circuit or the same uh, connection on uh, an IC or whatever it may be, but not connect to the one next to it. So you can have multiple things connected to one rail on a 555 timer, which we're gonna do here in a little bit. And I'm gonna show you. If you look on our page, we kind of walk through what this learn to breadboard is and the stuff that I'm kind of explaining to you, we give, uh, visual demonstration and a little more in-depth reasoning as to why you need a breadboard and what it is. Maybe our next maker camp will be, let's learn how to use a protoboard, which is similar to a breadboard, but you actually solder it together instead of just breadboarding. And the beauty of this is you can take these components out. So if we stick this capacitor in here, we can take them in and out as many times as we want. So your, your components don't get ruined, they can get reused. And as any electronics project goes, you're probably gonna need to try again because nothing ever goes right on the first time, right? So let's get started with this activity. We first did this activity at Maker Fair 2019 in Bay Area. And we had such a good turnout. We did, I think, 2,500 of these uh, breadboard kits and they all went. Had every single kit get made in a tent at Maker Faire and it was so much fun. What this project is, is it's a, a light theremin project where you put your hand over the light sensor and it changes the tone of the speaker, the buzzing coming out of the speaker. And honestly, you get 30 of these in a room and it's, it's pretty amazing that kind of, uh, 
music you can make from these can be a little annoying at times, but it's a lot of fun. So this kit, which you can buy on DigiKey at the bottom of this site, you can buy this kit and do this project in a classroom. You can do it over and over and over again because it is a breadboard. So let's change the camera back and let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do, if we go to our page on the right, we'll start with a 555 timer. And we're gonna put it basically right in the middle. So you see this line here in the middle. This is not, these two sides are not connected to each other. As you can see, they are not connected to each other. So if you put an IC right in the middle, just like this, you're not shorting anything out. So this is how we start. We're gonna put that in columns 13 through 16. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go from there. So what's the next step? We're gonna use jumper wires, just simple jumper wires like this today. These jumper wires are make it really easy to jump anywhere on the circuit board that you need to. But if you really wanna get fancy, you can use jumper wires like this and have everything flat, nice and flat, tight to the board, and it looks really, really nice when you're finished. And I have one of those finished. I'll show you in a little while. And I also wanna show you a full-size breadboard. So you can get breadboards in many different shapes, sizes, and configurations, but this is a, a full-size breadboard, and DigiKey offers everything from a micro breadboard, half-size, full-size, and even ones that are much larger. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna connect the positive rail to the IC. So you can see on this breadboard, we have a negative rail and a positive rail. And they're not connected on either end, so if we need to jump over to one, we'll have to do something like this, like positive to positive, which in our circumstance, we won't need to do that, but that's how you would connect these together. So the first one is we're gonna connect Column 13, we're just gonna connect it right here. And as you can see, that is gonna connect this column 13 over to the positive pin on this 555 timer. Now the next thing, we're going to jump over from pin four on this, and this is also gonna go to the positive rail. And then we're gonna connect the ground terminal. So we'll put ground on this side and we'll connect it right, here. well, we'll put it over here, just so it's out of the way. Now we're gonna start with a resistor. So resistors have different coding on them. So here we have two different resistors. We have a 10K and a 100 microfarad or not microfarad, um, let's see what our, our resistor values. We have a 10K ohm, and I don't know exactly what the other one is off the top of my head. Oh, a one meg. So you can see the, the colors on there. These stripes will tell you what color they are. So the brown, black, orange is gonna be our 10K. And then the brown, black, green is gonna be our one meg. So we have to make sure and not get these uh, confused for one another. And we're gonna start with a one meg. So we'll connect this to pin two on the 555 timer and to ground. And you can see it's right next to our, our ground rail. Let's see if you can see that. Hopefully it focuses pretty good for you. And we do have a, a really good diagram on exactly how this circuit looks over here. Next up, we're gonna do the capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor. So there is a difference between these two types of capacitors. One of them, it, it does matter which side is positive and negative, and the white line on the capacitor is always the negative or the short lead. That's always gonna be the negative. And this kind of capacitor, you can go either way. It doesn't matter. So we're gonna put the positive in column 15, and the negative in column 23. 
The beauty of a breadboard is you can stretch these leads out wherever you need to go. There we go. That one's ready. Now let's add our speaker. So this is a terminal block that we can put the speaker leads into. And you can see that's going to be on column 23 and 24. So we'll pop this little guy into 23 and 24. Make sure we have enough room. So you can see on this drawing that 23 is going to be our positive rail for the speaker and 24 is going to be our negative. So we're going to want to jump her over from the negative side of the speaker to the negative rail on the breadboard. There we go. And our speaker is right here. This is just a simple speaker. The wires are, the leads are plenty long and we can trim those down if we need to, if we need to make this look pretty. But for now, we'll just leave it. We'll, we'll see how it works. Okay, so on this terminal block, you're gonna shove the wires in the holes and you have to push these down to release the hole and th that's what's gonna hold the wire in place. So let's see if I can do that easily here. Push it down. And you'll feel it kind of go in, into place. There we go, that's nice and tight. And we'll do the negative side. There we go. That looks good. All right, what's next here? Looks like we're gonna do our aluminum capacitor, or our other capacitor in rail four from ground to column four. And I like how these breadboards are numbered. They're numbered by columns and rows. So you have one through 30 and then A through J. So you can always kind of tell exactly where you need to go. And you can set it up as a grid pattern like this would be 4A if you're teaching this as a class. All right, now we're gonna do the light sensor. So this is basically just a variable resistor. And as you put your hand over it, it changes the resistance value based on the light. So we're gonna put this in 4E and 4F. 4E and 4F. And sometimes these leads are a little flimsy and they're harder, sometimes hard to push in. And I would suggest using just a simple needle nose pliers and pushing it in. And I do see I have the chat live here. So if there's any questions along, along the way, jump in on the chat and I'll do what I, I can to answer your question or we have other people in the background that can help answer as well. Next step. All right, let's get this light sensor electrically connected. So as you can see in 4H, we're gonna be connecting over to the 555 timer. So we'll, we'll bring that over to 14H. 14H, come on to 4H. And then we also have 15H. It's gonna to jump to the other side of 4D. And there we go. There's that one. And now what's left? Okay, it looks like we have 4C. It's gonna also connect to it would be 14C. There we go. And I do love how breadboards look like a, a spaghetti factory, a big spaghetti mess, because it just shows progress in my mind. All right, it looks like we're pretty close here. We're getting pretty close to finishing this simple breadboarding circuit up. So we have to add the other resistor Okay, this is going to be on 4J to the positive rail. Grab another wire over here. Actually, I don't need a wire. I'm using the resistor. What am I talking about? All right, so 4J right here to anywhere on the positive rail. 
And again, just make sure you get some of these in there. When you get a lot of things in a breadboard, sometimes it's hard to get your fingers in and get things in the right place. So like I said, just use a, a little needle nose to push it in. And then we need to connect the battery. This is just a simple battery pack. We're using three AAA batteries and just a positive and a negative terminal lead. And all you have to do on this is connect it into these terminal rails. So what we did in this project, on this side closest to me, we're using just the negative terminal rail. And then on the other side, we're using just the positive terminal rail. That'll keep everything separated. If you have a big project, there's a good chance you'll need to use both terminal rails on each side. And that's fine, but just uh, for ease, of, for simplicity, we're going this way. Let's make sure we connect this in the proper way. And then we'll put this one in. You can hear it buzzing. And that is really loud and not so fun. I'll put it a little closer to the microphone. I said not so fun, but I mean really fun. So let's connect it again. Oh, put it in, see, you can't put it in the top positive rail, it's not gonna work. So let's put it in the negative rail. As I cover the sensor, it changes the pitch of the, the speaker. Now, if you really wanna play around with this, you can change around your values. You can change around the resistor values. You can change the capacitor value, and you can make this sound any way you would like. You can even change the light sensor for an LED, or not the light sensor, the speaker for an LED, and then you can have uh, your LED get brighter or dimmer, however you want it to look. Now, I think I have a, a different resistor here. Let's pull this out. Not a resistor, I keep saying the wrong word. A different capacitor. So this is gonna change your tone value. It's just a simple change for a different capacitor. And let's see what the difference is in the tone. I hope you guys can hear that. That is really high pitch. I think that'll keep some mosquitoes away up in Northern Minnesota. So when you get to this point, okay, say you're doing an electronic design and this circuit works. I know that this is what I need. Now I'm gonna try and take this a little further. I don't want it to fall apart. If I put it off to the side of my work desk, you never know some of these wires can pop out or things just, you want it to look a little neater. So as I said earlier, you can take different jumper wires and you can make it look neat. This is the exact same circuit. It's just cleaned up a little bit. And I'll put this in here. Oh, we might as well get both of them going. Let's see what kind of music we can play. Right, I'm gonna put this other capacitor in over here and we'll make some music. This isn't as cool as John Park's music that he creates, but We'll, uh, we'll make you. All right, there it is. So this is the Make Learn to Breadboard activity. This is available on maker.io, which is uh, a DigiKey website where we have different projects, platforms, and a lot of really cool information for makers out there. I'm gonna change my camera again so you guys can see me. All right, there, hopefully you can see me. So again, this is our maker.io website is a great way to get started with electronics and technology and circuit boards. And we have all the information you need. We have links over to buy the projects the products for the projects and very simple how-to guides and just a lot of really great information from community leaders out there. We work very close with some companies like Adafruit and SparkFun and Kitronic and some really cool people that are very passionate about this space, very passionate about teaching 
and having their products out there and content around them. And speaking of passionate, we all know Make Magazine is a great magazine. I have my new edition of the magazine right here, which is a great read. Helen Lee has such a good article in here. I, I hope everybody got a chance to look through this. And with this came the board's guide. So if you want to know how to, or what does, uh, development boards are trending right now, what are popular, what are the go-to boards, this guide is what's going to tell you. And we also have this set up in augmented reality. So all you have to do is you take your phone and I'll show you a quick little video. Let's see if I can find this. I'd like to demo it live, but it's hard to demo live when you have uh, different devices and we've had technical issues, so I wanna make sure and do this properly. All right, here it is. So what this does, come on, is it will bring up your boards in augmented reality. You can play around with the boards. It gives good information about the boards, what it is, what it's going to be used for, and just a way to get a 360 view of the board without having it in hand. You just take your finger and rotate it around. There's an Arduino Uno that everybody knows and loves. And then with each one of these is there's a link back to DigiKey to get more information about the board. You can scroll through the different charts and read about the really cool development boards. And we even have a, we'll call it a magical video from Lady Ada from Adafruit talking about her take on boards and what's trending and how to get interested in development boards and what it takes to create a development board. So this is what I have for you today. I really hope everybody enjoyed this and we hope to do a lot more maker camps and we hope to do uh, more versions of this. We can do a intro to soldering next and we, we have these opportunities are endless with electronics and technology. So I'll leave the chat open for a few minutes here. I'll try to answer everything I can. And I encourage everybody to go check out the Learn to Breadboard activity, which is digikey.com slash L2B for Learn to Breadboard. And if you want more information on the boards guide, you can go to digikey.com slash boards guide. And we have more information on how to download the app. And you can even look through this guide uh, on our site. We'll have more information on there. And we look forward to more. So thank you, everybody. There's a lot of maker camps out there. So go to the maker camp site. If you want to tweet about this, use the hashtag make it together. And we have, we are pretty lucky in this time that we can do some of these projects and showcase it over the web. So please reach out to me. If you have any questions, reach out to make and let's just have some fun. All right. Take care, everybody.